The benefit of using Facebook lead forms as opposed to an external one is that Facebook is going to auto populate these forms with the information from the Facebook page. Today, we're going to be focusing on Facebook lead forms. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about different features in the Facebook business suite. Uh, but today we're going to talk specifically about lead forms. Lead forms are only going to be available to business pages, not personal pages. If you don't have a business page, you're going to want to make sure you create that before you try and use this feature because it is required and the only way to do it. On a desktop screen, you have a number of options on the left hand side. One of them is Lead Center. Um, that's going to be the place that you want to go. But if you were to go to resource and tools and publishing tools, eventually you can get there. Um, you can also get there from the ads manager. But I would say look for the Lead Center. This is a little shortcut that they've added recently that allows you to get there faster. But it's going to show you all these different tools and features here. And they actually have built in like a CRM for you within Facebook. Now that was surprising to me because I wasn't really expecting to see that. Uh, but for every lead that you have, you can actually manage their contact information. You can track if you contacted them, what action is next, almost like a little mini Salesforce that's built right into, right into, um, into Facebook. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, on the left hand side here, because again, this is part of the Facebook business suite. I mentioned that there were a number of tools and I'm going to click on more tools here because I want to just show you all the different features that are here. Um, so once you get here, this is just showing me people that I've had. Um, but if I want to create forms, they call it instant forms. I'll click that and then that's going to bring me over here to where I can set the form up. All right. So once you're here on this page, you'll see that you have the option to view any forms that you have active. Uh, there's a tab here that's for draft forms. So forms that you've created but have not published yet. Just a note on creating forms. Do not publish them until you know you are done because you cannot edit them once they're done. So if you create a form and you publish it, but then you realize, oh, I need to change something. Uh, you have to create a new form. I don't know why they don't have an edit functionality, but they don't. So keep it in draft form and until you're ready to publish it. That's a little, little tip for you. And then here is a CRM setup where you can actually have the leads that get collected automatically populate over to an external CRM system. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can use a tool called Zapier. Uh, Zapier is a pretty universal tool, thousands of plugins, and they work with just about everything. So I'm actually going to go back and change mine um, and use Zapier to bring the leads that I collect here over to Constant Contact so that I can have that seamless process and that lead nurturing <laughs> process in place automatically. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So to get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is click create form and it's going to ask you if you want to create a lead form or if you want to duplicate an existing form. Um, we're going to start from scratch and we're going to go ahead and do a new form. So I'm going to leave that option there and click next. Next, I have an option to start creating my form and then I get a nice little preview on the side panel of what that's going to look like. Now, by default, there's four steps here. Um, and I'll explain each of these steps as we go through them. But as I type information here on the left hand side, it's going to auto populate on the right hand side. So I have a chance to look at it and see how it looks. The form name that you type in here is really just behind the scenes for your purposes. So if you have multiple forms, you know what this form is related to. Nobody will see that. So I'm going to go ahead and name that and I'm going to just use this uh, lead form workshop. I'm going to call that. Now, when you go to form type, it's asking you what type of form that you want to create. Now, it's important that you take in mind because more volume is one option and more volume always sounds good because who doesn't want more people? OK, the other one is called higher intent. And the thing with higher intent is that there's a few more qualifiers that you can put into place to make sure you're getting a higher quality lead. So depending on what it is that you're offering, you may doing a volume. So one example where if you just have like a free guide that you're offering as a PDF download so that you can build up email list, you may not necessarily want to put a lot of qualifiers in for that because it's just something that they're going to click through. They're going to provide their information. They're going to download and it's done. Um, you're going to have a higher volume of contacts, but you didn't ask many questions and then therefore you didn't qualify them as much. Um, but there's some times where you might want to hire intent. So let's say you're selling like a big ticket item and you want to make sure that that you're attracting people who are very targeted for that product. Um, you can ask some questions to, to make that process not as easy. You know, for them, if they really want it, they're going to answer the questions and they're going to go through the process. So think about that between the more volume and the higher intent. Higher intent means more questions. Uh, more volume just means less questions and more, more contacts that you're going to get. 
Um, so for the sake of this workshop today, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to leave it on more volume. Um, next is your intro. So you can add an image on your form and you can also use one from your page or you can upload. Um, so if I click use the image from your ad, um, if I was designing an ad, it'll pull that. Otherwise, I can use an uploaded image. I can click upload image and I can just choose something that I've already created. Um, so I'm going to just choose something here that I have that I was working on before the workshop just so you can see that. So here that image automatically populates on that form. Um, next, I have an opportunity to put a greeting. Now, let me tell you a little something about this section here uh, because they give you the option to do like list bullet points or to be able to type a paragraph. It ain't no paragraph. <laughs> it does not look good and you cannot put that many characters there. Um, so be brief, be to the point and keep in mind that you just want to say the things that are gonna be important for somebody to say, this relates to me, I'm gonna take action. Um, so first thing you wanna do is have a nice catchy headline, something that's gonna get people's attention. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and use um, automate lead generation. And then I'm just gonna choose lists. Like most people are, they're looking at your, your form or in seconds and they're not gonna be reading it in detail. So I like to just hit the high points. So let's say um, automate lead nurturing increase your prospects and I'm gonna do one more because I like doing things in three boost sales okay something like that all right so as you can see as I type that only two of the bullet points show and the rest is under a show more I don't like show more so I'm gonna get rid of my third one and just leave leave it nice and clean and leave the two Next is the questions part. So here, um, this is the form name, lead workshop, form type. Okay, I've already done that. So this is where the part where you need to be careful and you really need to think about what's really important for you to know. Because the more questions you ask here, the less likely people are to want to provide the information. Um, I like to use these to use the information that Facebook provides and will auto-populate uh, because if it auto-populates from the person's Facebook profile, they don't have to type it. I know it sounds crazy, but I find that people will do this if you can auto-populate auto the fields for them and they don't have to type it because it's just easy. All they have to do is confirm that, yep, that's what my information. They don't have to type anything. They're more likely to go through and just click and ask. Um, so I don't want to ask any questions for this. If I wanted to ask a question, I would just be able to click this button here and it lets me choose if I want a multiple choice, a short answer question, a conditional question, which is, you know, if they answer this, then do that. Or if I wanted to set this up for an appointment request, I can do that too. But I don't want to sign up. I don't want to create any custom questions because I don't want to make this process any longer than it needs to be. Um, I'm going to set this up to be a free download type item. So I just want to get their first name, their email address, maybe a phone number, depending on the business that you're in. I typically don't need that. I'll get that later on as I'm doing the nurturing process. So Facebook will show you the fields that they already have in the system. And this is called user generated information that Facebook already has. The benefit of using Facebook lead forms as opposed to an external one is that Facebook is going to auto populate the, these forms um, with the information from the Facebook page. So people would like that because they don't have to leave the platform to then go externally outside and do something else. What ends up happening sometimes is when you take people outside of the platform that they're on, they end up getting distracted and doing something else and they never come back to the form. Um, so that what tends to happen. So what they've done is they put these fields here so that you can have it auto populate based on the information that they provided Facebook. Um, so right now I have this set up for email address and full name. Um, if I wanted to add some other fields, I could, you know, I can break it up into first and last name. Um, I can ask some demographic questions about, you know, where they are, gender, work information. There's a lot of different information that you can add here, but keep in mind, the more you ask, uh, the less <laughs> they're going to want face time. They're going to give you to fill this stuff out. So just keep in mind, make sure you really need that information. Okay, so next is privacy policy. Now, if you uh, don't have a website, at least for this purpose, if you're going to be doing any type of advertising, make sure that you have a very basic website that's going to have a privacy policy on there, uh, because if you're doing any type of advertising nowadays, it's required. Um, so whenever I am running an ad, I have on my WeMerge Media website, I can just go to my website. And at the bottom of my page, I have a link to a privacy policy and an advertising disclosure, that sort of thing. So by law, you have to have that. If you don't have that, um, there's websites out there where you can get that. You just type in, you know, like 
uh, generate privacy policy. Where was it? Oh, there we go. Um, like a privacy policy generator. And there's websites out there for free that you can use to have that generated. And it's just text that's going to say how you're going to use the information that you collect um, to make sure that people's privacy is protected. Um, so it gives people the option to read that privacy policy and decide if they want to give you their information. We won't sell your data because that's what people are typically worried about. Uh, you can also add a custom disclaimer. So if you were to click this here, it gives you the, the ability to be able to add more information like terms of condition and that sort of thing. Um, but I'm going to remove that from now. We're almost done. And then I'm going to give you a little walkthrough. And now here's the part at the end where you get to give the person who's providing their information a reward. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, if you're going to do a lead generation form, typically you want to provide something of value. So that could be you providing a free consultation. Uh, that can be you providing a ebook that they can download for free. Um, you want to be able to offer something that's going to make people say, yes, I'm going to give you my information because I want to get this in exchange. I do it all the time. You know, I get guides and sales guides and marketing guides and tips and ebooks like all the time, webinars, like all that stuff. You know, I sign up for it. You know, I'm, I'm, I know the stuff that I want and how I can use it. And I'm only giving my information to those places. So I don't worry about it too much. Um, but here on this page, this is kind of like your final page you have an opportunity to give it a headline so they give you one by default thanks you're all set um and now here you can customize so um as a gift to you please download our free guide on how to generate leads and boost your sales using facebook lead forms okay so i can put that message in there i can then you know you see here i have a little button that says view website i can change that to download or if i was doing something where they can get a free call or consultation i can make that a call now button um, whatever i type or choose is going to be the option there so call to action is download free guide and then last step is going to be to put a link to whatever that guide is so again you know if you have a link on your website i'm just going to for now just copy one from this uh, blog post that i did um but you, ideally you'll want to be able to have a link to your i keep on doing this where am i here we go uh, ideally you'll want to have a link to your pdf um if you have any um uh like Constant Contact I know has like a form library. So I'm able to upload PDFs to there and then it'll generate a link for me. Uh, you can also use Bitly or something like that, but I, you're gonna need a link in order to provide a way for people to download that. You can also send them to your website and on your website, if there's a, a hidden page or a private page, uh, you can send them there so that they can download as well. You know, I've done that option too. So once you put that in there and now I have my ad and they, as I mentioned before, you don't wanna publish it because I, you can't change it so i'm just going to save a draft for now and then i'm going to go back and walk you through the process so you can see how it works and we can test it out all right so that is there now if i click on my form i can test my form opens up on my screen and i can see how it looks so you'll see i didn't type anything in yet and because i chose fields that facebook already has data on it's auto populated with the email address and the full name i can go ahead and click next it gives person the option to say okay yeah i'm going to read the privacy policy or i'm good to go i'm going to hit submit once they hit submit they have this blue button here now that they can download the free guy and then it redirects them to the next place that's it uh, it doesn't take that long to set up once you do that. Um, it's quick and easy. You just have to have your materials ready beforehand so that you can plug that information in. Now, I have a workshop coming up that's going to be on the 23rd. I'll put this link in the comment where I'm going to do this in a group setting and teach people who want to create some lead forms and ads. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in that workshop. We'll have a one hour workshop where we'll do so. Uh, that workshop, typically to do something like that, I would charge like on an individual basis if you're doing it individually, uh, like $50 for an hour worth of training on that. This is gonna be a group format and until next week, Tech Talk Tuesday, uh, it's gonna be on sale for $14.99 if you wanna join for that and learn how to go deeper in that with the creating the ads and all that kind of stuff. Um, so once you have your lead form made, you can go back here. I'm gonna say cancel because I'm done. Um, you can go ahead back to your forms and you can boost or advertise any of your forms. Um, let me close my preview. So you'll see here, they have a little button here that says boost. Um, if you've collected leads, you'll also see a little download button, but there's no leads for this yet because I just um, 
published it. But if I select on this other one that I have here, you see there's seven lead contacts there, which I can download. Lead contacts last 90 days from when they're submitted. So you want to make sure you either download it within 90 days or put a process in place where every week uh, you're downloading that or make sure you're using that CRM setup to have that information flow over to wherever you're going to do so. Um, so in the workshop that I have coming up, I'm going to show you how to take it to the next step and get your uh, create an ad for this. Um, you can just do this for any of your forms. And it's pretty cool uh, where you can create an ad. And what Facebook is going to do is put a button there that's going to lead people over to that form so that you can start doing your leads. If you set this up to run continuously, you know, you can set it up with like 30 bucks a month or something like that. You can have a lead generation process that's constantly flowing. And if you have that external system, like an email marketing system, like constant contact, you can actually have those people go to a specific list and then they get a drips of emails so often, you know, just to kind of nurture them along the way. So there's a lot to do there. Uh, I know that's a lot. We're not going to cover it all today. But if you want to learn more about the details of that, you can always go and sign up for the workshop that I'll put the link through. Or you can go to WeMergeMedia.com, request a consultation, and we can talk one on one about how to do something custom for you. It's it's pretty amazing. All the tools that Facebook Business Suite offers. This is, I think, our first fourth episode talking about all the tools in Facebook Business Suite. Again, if you haven't done so, make sure you get over to your Facebook business page and spend some time in there. You'll find all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, you can go through and you can go on YouTube and you can find everything that I'm talking about. Um, but if you want a little bit more one on one attention and to be able to ask some questions and go into more detail, um, I'll be able to do that in that one hour session that we have coming up at the end of February. So that's our episode today of Tech Talk Tuesday. Thank you again for tuning in. And um, I look forward to seeing some of you in the workshop. But I also look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time for the next episode of Tech Talk Tuesday. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. and Thanks again for tuning in.